On March 8th, 1971, Joe Frazier left hooked the zero off Muhammad Ali's previously unblemished record. It remains the true fight of the century in boxing history. There had been others previously. Jack Johnson against James J. Jeffries back in 1910. Jack Dempsey against George Carpentier back in 1921, the first ever million dollar gate in boxing, but both were far too one-sided to really be deserving of the title. More recently, of course, Floyd Mayweather Jr. against Manny Pacquiao, although the less said about that fight, the better. It was an amazing, superhuman effort by Smoke and Joe that night in Madison Square Garden. Undoubtedly in his prime, but a classic cornerstone of debate in boxing is could the pre-exile Muhammad Ali of the 1960s, back when he was more fleet of foot, could that Ali have got the better of Smoke and Joe? Now, interestingly, before Fight of the, the Century took place, Muhammad Ali was actually talking about how he's got a bit more man strength now. He's 29, he's sitting down on his punches more, he's a stronger and better fighter. And in the fight itself, despite the fact he lost, he looked absolutely superb. It was a, an attacking Muhammad Ali, a word we don't usually associate with Muhammad. He was absolutely drilling those punches home, and he was looking for a six-round knockout. That was his prediction. A little bit ambitious, particularly how things played out, but he was looking for blood in there. He looked absolutely superb. Now, a counter-argument, an interesting one, is that some people don't just think the alley of the 60s was better, which there's a good reason to believe he was more active, but some people believe the Muhammad Ali of 1972 and 74 was better as well when he started getting momentum again, when he was more focused of regaining that title. He was a bit more serious and, yes, as I just said, a lot more active. In 1972, he actually won the Fighter of the Year award, probably his lesser-known one. He shared it with Carlos Monzon, which is a bit odd, the fact there was one where they sh the uh, Ring magazine allowed the award to be shared. But he was very active that year and very sharp. Now, of course, when he fought Joe Frazier again in the second fight, he was a lot more focused. He seemed to have a tighter game plan, but it was only for 12 rounds. Frazier wasn't the same fighter, of course. Really, Ali knocked the prime out of him. Frazier spent about a month in hospital after Fight of the Century. But it's not just that, but it's mentally. Frazier had nowhere to go, really. What do you do after you climb Everest like that? It's, you've got two undefeated heavyweights. Everyone's clamoring for them to fight. They do, you win. You're the man. It's like, where do you go? And there were talks for Frazier to retire before that fight anyway. My hunch is, is that had it even been the Muhammad Ali of the 60s, at some point that Frazier is going to force him to fight. I don't think Ali could have overcame Frazier by just moving and peppering him. At some point he's gonna, he knows he's going to have to sit down on those punches and that's when Joe is going to really engage him. 15 rounds and that mentality he had that night for just, I'm going to win at all costs. I want to be the man. I really think he was irresistible. And I feel, prime for prime, Smoke and Joe probably still ekes out a decision against the Muhammad Ali of the 1960s. I'm not so sure it's a popular opinion, but what do you think? Say the Muhammad Ali of 1966 against the Smoke and Joe of 1971.